You're listening to Get Out and Drive Podcast with John Custom Car Nerd Meyer and Sean Mr. Sedan Man Shara. We'll be bringing you gearheads all the information you never wanted to know about cars and why they should be on the road and not in your garage. Are you ready to get out and drive? And we are back with Get Out and Drive Podcast. I am Sean, Mr. Sedan Man Cheryl. I am John, custom Carner Meyer. Today we are talking with Brian Harrison, who is the owner of Harrison's Rod and Custom. Hey, Brian. How you doing, guys? Good to be here. I'm doing glad well. uh, doing doing very well, man. I'm glad you can come talk with us today. Uh, you popped up on our social media, and uh, and and you uh, you said you actually listen to the show, and that's kind of how I met kind of how I met you. And, that's right. Uh, yeah, I made a comment or two about watching the show, <clears throat> and, uh, like what you guys were doing, and just wanted to drop you a line and tell you were doing a good job. And what about a two hour conversation after that or so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we talk quite a bit. You know, it's uh, it's it's a compliment. It's always fun to talk with fans and talk with listeners and uh, and see yeah, what they see on the it. other the other side of the the other side of the camera, the other side of the the, uh, the speaker. And uh, you told me you do a lot with uh, uh, building trucks and and have a lot with uh, just a general history of trucks. Go ahead and talk me through uh, uh, what what you do. So uh, we've been in business since 2001 in Greenville, Tennessee. Um, different levels of, of being in business at, at different times. We kind of backed off for a while and came back, um, got busier in the last few years, recently moved to a new facility last year. We got 5,000 square feet now here in town. And uh, yeah, we, we started out doing hot rods, 60s cars, street rods, stuff like that. But I always liked trucks because, you know, I'm past you know i had many trucks and lowered trucks in the 90s and, and that kind of thing and you know was kind of excited when the truck stuff came back to light because trucks you know didn't always have somewhere to go and uh, now they're coming to the forefront so we're a hot rod shop that also did trucks and we've evolved to our truck shop that also does hot rods and street rods now so um very good 85 percent probably this past year was chevy truck stuff uh, blazers, that kind of thing, and uh, mm-hmm. got acquainted with the guys from United by Trucks. We were on episode last year, and it was a it was a great thing meeting with Robbie, building that relationship because that pushed us out with the C10 market people. And uh, wow, we've we've been growing from there. Yeah, that stuff seems to be uh, just absolutely on fire. I thought yes. 67 to 72 was ridiculous when that re blew up. Um, they've always been popular, but when that re blew up. I, I never looked twice at a 73 to 87 truck. And now those are just absolutely exploded. Um, oh, yeah. Is you, you find it other than nostalgia, you find any other reason behind that? Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, I, I'd love to have a building full of 32, three, four Fords, $250,000 mm-hmm. projects. That'd be great. But, you know, a guy can go grab a square body. $4,500, $6,000 truck. He can do a little here, a little there. He can work a job, raise a family, still mm-hmm. get out and ride. And, and one of the things I've noticed about these guys, you know, it's you can park a $10,000 patina ride beside a $100,000 build, and if things got some trick metal work and some, some good stance and stuff like that, they'll look at mm-hmm. it, and then they go look at the 100000 and, and whatever. There's just uh, – Right. It's, it's not like anything I've ever seen before. It's they're all over the place, and they mm-hmm. they get as much excitement regardless of the level of what they're done to. Right, yeah, I see that a lot, and I see a lot of uh, um, a lot of patina trucks coming around, but they are street rod build underneath with interior, and exactly. and I've been seeing mm-hmm. that more and more and more, and that's really uh, really been catching my eye, and obviously catching everyone's eye. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, you know, what we try to do. You know, we we hope that our our style of builds are, are more street rod-ish, I guess. You know, I don't have any problem. You want to do 24, 26s. You want to lay on the rockers. We like looking at those trucks, too. Mm-hmm. LS builds, whatever. But, you know, we still like a carbureted bump and small block, maybe a big block, 18s and 20s in a stance, you know. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. we like our builds to carry over a street rod type flavor. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them borderline muscle car flavor, you know, but uh, right. less is more. 
we we like to get more impact with doing less and keeping things tight and, and more of a subdued takes you a minute to notice what it is you like about it. You know, we've got a few sure. things in the house that we're doing that we don't tell anybody what we're doing. And that's how we're pulling off the looks and the, and the things that we're doing. And nothing makes me happier than going on Instagram and somebody says it looks like a Harrison build. And I'm like, that's, we're, that's we're, awesome. If we're getting that, that then, then that's a good day for us. <laughs> yeah, that's a good compliment right there. With a handful of tools. So if we right. notice what we're doing, then, then we're tickled with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always a thing that you notice whenever uh, either people are ripping off your ideas or, or, uh, you know, things like that, that's when you know you're making the correct ripples in the pond. Right. That's, that's, uh, that's awesome. Have you, uh, have you built anything that has gotten like in, in your eyes or anyone's eyes, an enormous amount of press or things that have had, that you, you thought were groundbreaking things that have gotten ripped off? You know, we, We've been kicking around ideas on things, you know, street rod stuff for years that mm -hmm. we got caught sleeping and somebody did before we did. I think you always have that going on. But right, I right. guess it goes back to the Goldine truck. Uh, we'll see in a graphic later. Uh, it was a 85 truck that I bought. Um, it had just come out of paint from a guy. We bought it from him. We pushed it just a little further to the next level. And that's when I met Robbie. And mm -hmm. the Goldine truck was when we started growing our social media. We started pushing more C10 market stuff. Um, I was on an episode of C10 Talk one night, just like an okay. episode with six people. So um, we started we started pushing our social media around that truck, and that's when we started getting, um, yeah, the truck in the center. Um, you know, we started getting some exposure with that, and I think that's what kind of brought us to the forefront. Then we started releasing a little here and a little there, and then I started thinking, okay, so – this is what we got to do. Everything that's going on here, we got people that wonder, hey, what's going on here? So now we're pushing out what's going on here. You know, if we do a truck, mm -hmm. it gets exposed. We're going to put it on social media. Nice. Uh, so we're using that avenue now, and our customers like it because everybody wants to see their stuff online. You know, it's mm -hmm. we get a lot of working men builds, and then we got guys that want to, you know, really put some money into something and, and really go mm -hmm. over the top. So, um, but, you know, they all seem to like seeing their stuff being pushed out like that. So. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. social media has made a, made the world kind of small <laughs> and uh, you can talk to a lot of people and get a lot of people's attention real quick. Definitely. Yeah. It used to be a lot that, you know, you had to, you go to a show and you had to wait for the magazine to come out two, three months uh, or whatever, if you were shot for one or a show shot for a, for a field of vehicles in the magazine and things, or um, now there's people posting live from the shows. And, and I think that's, uh, that's, that's absolutely incredible. It's hurt the magazines and things and online is, is they've been trying to pick up, you know, with online magazines and everything, but that, that absolute instant gratification and instant feel from people on the ground at the show, putting up pictures on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere, um, is, uh, is absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I think with social media as well, you know, we're pushing our renderings out there. Mm -hmm. um, we're building relationships with these companies by tagging them. People start wanting you to say, Hey, you know, is there anything we can get on board with and use product? Just like you were talking about the SEMA builds and stuff. Right. Um, well now, you know, it's, I don't know if you'd call it the cart before the horse, but I know with the suburban that we're doing right now, we've already talked to a magazine about mm -hmm. it because they're interested in what we got going on. And, right. uh, I think they see it step by step. So they get a little more bought into this thing that they're, they're a little more into it before it's finished. So then, Mm -hmm. They're ready to see the final product. And, uh, yeah, I'm, right. I'm loving it because otherwise we'd be some guys sitting on this end of the country and nobody would know what you had going on. So now if you, you know, use your head and, and, and put some things out there, it can be really good for your business. It can be good for your hobby. You have a lot more fun with it, meeting a lot more people, you know. Right. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. And it, it gets to where the sponsors will – see an instant return on their involvement with your project. It's true. Um, that way they don't have involvement with your project at SEMA or at a show or whatever, wherever you do it, if it gets in a magazine or however you're promoting them, they would still, and I used, used, use the words in the old days, good Lord, it's 10, 15 years ago, how it used to be. They would be involved with your vehicle and they'd have to wait just like everybody else to see their, uh, 
to see what comes out, see where their money's going. Exactly. And you so, know, that we've got probably 16, 15 sponsors on that suburban build right now. Mm -hmm. Those companies are not just somebody that's on board with us for that one build. Sure. Um, we build relationships with those companies, you know, American racing. I've been doing American racing wheels since 2002. Um, mm -hmm. I got a picture over my shoulder over here. My dad, 1970 with his roadrunner sitting on torque crust. And mm -hmm. two great, of great wheel. We've owned. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we, we build relationships with these companies and when they think enough to put some time and investment into us, that we're going to see that we get their name out there. We're going to see that we treat your product right, that it's on the truck right, that we, in return, make them look good as well. And we, we're long-term. I mean, that list of sponsors on that thing, I've got multiple cars that we've done work. Some of them are not built. You know, we get a lot of chassis work. We get a lot of suspension. We may just wire a car, you know, things like that too. But any name that's on that rendering, we've got multiple cases where we've used their product on other vehicles out in our customer base right now. Right. Well, that's, that's great. And that's where you can show a lot of products in, in uh, being abused and being used actually on the street. It's true. Yep. You get a, you get a good product, you stand behind it and uh, you support them. I mean, that's, yep. that's part of what keeps the hobby uh, moving forward. I agree. You know, we've got some products in house that we use that, you know, we don't, I'll tell a customer sometimes, Hey, you know, you come in here, you get a starter and an alternator, you get a power master. They say, wow, mm -hmm. what's, what's so big about them? Well, what's the warranty? We don't know. We never had one break. That's why we still use it. There you, know, you go. So we've got, you know, some other companies that are that way. And I mm -hmm. don't offer them a lot of, a lot of deviation. The truck gets done here. This is what we're going to use because it works and we've got history and mm -hmm. it's not going to let you down. And I mm -hmm. think people, you know, everybody doesn't come to your door knowing precisely how they want to do it. If they did, they'd do it themselves. They're looking for your input. They're looking for honesty and they're mm -hmm. looking for you to do what you say you're going to do for how much you say you're going to do. It's the easiest industry in the world if you'll just treat people like you say you would. Um, right. And, you know, you get horror stories back of, of things that haven't went well for respective customers, but they, uh, they, they come here sometimes, they've been somewhere else, they've had bad product somewhere else with another brand, or they've had a, a bad history somewhere else, and it's a good opportunity to just do what you say and, and put them on a good product, get it on the car, and, and get them where they enjoy their vehicle, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's certainly very important, and, and like we touched on a moment ago, the, the, the end user, the consumer, wants to see a product in action. They want somebody else to break it, and and rebuild it and change it and do whatever very few people want to come out and have you know the uh the version 1.0 of anything exactly uh they want to have something that's a little further down the line that has been refined and they can trust it they see that there's a new product out there but they're skeptical to buy it they may see a video online that shows harrison's rod shop using this product and then they said you know, hey, this product broke down, and the the uh, the company immediately got us different product. Showed us how to install it differently, how to do it, whatever they do to make your to make your uh, the, the end user, the shop, uh, better. Consumers see that they see that online, and it's again instant gratification, and and they see the products getting uh, getting used and getting put on in real world applications. It's true. Social media is streamlining the way people shop for things. It's streamlining where they get the idea for what they want. They don't have to buy three magazines a month for six months and figure it out. They spend one night at home in their recliner looking up, you know, hey, this is a style of what's going on. Well, I like the way this guy does it. Let's call him up, you know. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of got, you kind of develop a package of what you seem to be doing over and over. And I get guys online that say, hey, you know, it's another one of those trucks you're doing with the same 18s and 20s and the same stance. Why don't you do 20s all the way around? Well, then it would look like you did it, you know? Right. <laughs> we want it to look like we did it. This is what we do, and, and we've got mm -hmm. reasons why this is how we're doing it, you know? So Right. Sure. Yeah, if you get their ideas gotta, a lot quicker and easier now than they used to. Very much so. Very much so. And, and that's, like I said, ideas get stolen, um, you do. know, but if you have a good formula, and people like that formula, stick with it. Yep. 
You don't have to revamp your vehicle. If you've built another truck for a customer, you know 18's fit, you know which ones. What's, what to do with the front suspension? What to do with the rear suspension? Not that you're building cookie cutter vehicles, but you're building a specific vehicle that, just, that, that draws a specific crowd. Well, you know, I look back, you know, growing up when I was wanting to get into the business, you know, every single person that I would say was an influence on me, they all had their style. You know, they, you could look at an alloy car. It looks like mm -hmm. an alloy car. Right. You yes. look at a Boyd car. It was a Boyd car. Yep. Uh, Alan Johnson car. It looks like an Alan Johnson car. You know, yep. it's, that's, that's fine to me. I, I don't want our stuff to look like the way everybody else does it. I want it to look like the way we do it. Right, if I can't right. be happy with it and I can't watch it leave here, you know, we got a straightaway down to the intersection here. It's about a quarter mile long. If I don't stand in that door and want to hear it and watch it leave, we missed a mark. Um, right. You know, we want them to sound like they look and look like they sound. Great. That is, uh, that's fantastic. Talk us through uh, some of the builds that you've done. Uh, I know we've got some uh, some eye candy, some pictures that are going to be showing here, but kind of talk us through the builds and uh, let us know what happened with them. Okay. So this truck here we call Blue Collar. Uh, mm -hmm. 87 fuel injected Silverado. Well, it's actually custom deluxe. Um, R10, <laughs> one year only. They call them an R10 in 87. So that thing's been in the family uh, 15, 17 years. I found it when my dad was looking for a truck. He wanted it to drive every day. That was his work truck. It sat in a factory parking lot about two miles from the shop here for years, every day. Um, not going to lie to you, that picture's real forgiving. The truck's got some road wear. It's got some character. Mm -hmm. I can show you a dent on that truck. I know what did it. You know, I was there when this happened. <laughs> whatever, you know. But, you know, that's daddy's truck, and it ain't going nowhere, so – I right. got it from him, and uh, we ran that thing on 15-inch torque thrust for a long time, big 285 70s, and, you know, it mm -hmm. was bad style. And when I got it, we changed it up. And at sure. first, he kind of gave me the fish eye, like, man, I can't <laughs> change it up my truck. But then when he got done with it, he's like, yeah, that's about right. So <laughs> he's, he's on board now, and uh, that's kind of my, my personal that we're, we're riding a lot in now. It's got air, and it's just easy to drive. It ain't fast. It won't turn a tire up. But – you know, right. I mean, if I say wants to jump in and go to dinner, go hit a cruise in, it's comfortable. We got a good radio, and, and we're mm -hmm. just enjoying that thing. You know, that's mm -hmm. great. Is that a uh, is that a stock uh, short bed truck? It is. It is. Very nice truck. That's actually, sweet. came from Detroit, and I when the guy told me it's from Detroit, I about got back in the truck. I'm like, this thing's going to be rotten, but apparently, right. whoever had it put it up for the winter. So, uh, uh -huh. I mean, the truck's rust free, and I've been offered, you know. Probably should have took it money for the truck, but it's dad's truck. It ain't for sale. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah and it's, I, and like you say, it's not painted perfect. It's, it's got its battle scars and you know how each one got there. That's a great history. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what John and I call trophies though. Uh, every little chip or scratch in the paint. <laughs> that, that's the real trophy with a vehicle. Cause that just shows you get out and drive and, and, and enjoy what they're built for. Yep. So, Every little road trophy, I know which one's on my car. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, that, there's a place for something super, super clean. And, you know, some people want to do that. But, you know, we're over here in the picture of my Nova now. And I'll take a yeah. few more planes with that car. And, I mean, in that picture, you can tell it's a little slicker. Here again, mm -hmm. she ain't perfect. But it did 3,800 miles in 10 days one time on the power tour. We long hauled in 2009 in that car. No power steering, no nice. AC. A uh, really, really rowdy small block with a four-speed, and it's a hot mm -hmm. rod. I mean, there's no question when you hear that thing. But mm -hmm. that car has been my family. I I got it 2002 from a man that my dad worked with for about 40 years, and I remember him buying it when I was a kid from uh, the woman who bought the car new in our hometown. Wow. And, uh, he was one of the first people that I remember of our friends that was actually restoring an old Chevy car. Uh, Mr. Jim, he had that car. Uh, I remember seeing him in town and asked him, you know, hey, what are you doing on this? What are you doing on that? You know, saw it all through being built. Uh, that car was painted in 1986 and upholstered in 87. And oh, wow. he never drove it. It's sat. It's factory six cylinder, three speed car. Uh, it's 66283. Actual Nova block like supposed to be in it. The Z bar's right. The bell housing's right. But it's got a sagging off four wow. speed now. You know, just. 
some mm-hmm. updates, build a specialties wheels on that one. Um, mm-hmm. But there again, you know, I've, I, I have actually priced that car two times in the last couple of years. Um, people realize it's a true SS and they realize it's never been a part. It's never really been a bad car. So I, I used to say I would never sell that one, but there, there comes a point you're kind of foolish if you don't. And uh, I, I have a couple times in the last couple of years priced it. So um, I, I would hate to see it go, but we, we drive that car. We enjoy it. You know, we get out and ride and you get caught in rain, you get caught in rain, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what cars are for. People don't understand. I mean, we, I've, I've been building vehicles or doing restorations for 30 years plus. Um, so many customers that I have have built cars, trucks, vehicles, whatever, they're put away and the customer thinks they're made of sugar and I never, never see them out. And they're just they're, it, it They can't see my work out on the street to gain another customer. That's the biggest problem. Yeah, yeah. We're never going to be accused of having water soluble paint on our cars. Uh, <laughs> we're in the rain, we're, I've been in the snow in that Nova. I've been in a hailstorm in that Nova. Uh, you know, I remember a time, uh, Josh, buddy of mine, he's about like my little brother. His dad's got a steel 36 Willys coupe, and yeah. he let him take it to a, t- a show out of town. We got caught in a hailstorm. We stepped in a Sonic and sat under the cover so we didn't get hail damage till it was over. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not afraid to use them. That sounds familiar, Sean. Sean and I it, had that a, problem with his, his Chevelle. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a Chevelle. It's a, it's a nice, shiny car, and uh, got caught in the hail one time pretty bad, and we had to duck into a uh, gas station, uh, wait for the hill to kind of blow over a little bit. And had some gal driving around trying to push me out of the gas station so she could get gas. And, <laughs> no, you could just wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been caught in hail a couple times with my car. Yep. So uh, the picture there is of uh, that's of our booth at the southeastern. Uh, all Chevy GMC truck nationals in Nashville. And uh, the blazer actually belongs to my dad and mom. Now that's an 88 <clears throat> on an 81 two wheel drive chassis, uh, frame off truck, fuel injected. There again, it's just a good driver. You know, you can, you can get out and enjoy the thing. Uh, bought it from the guy. That's how I met who I got my gold truck from. And, uh, he had restored the thing. It was almost like walking on the dealership lot and buying a brand new two wheel drive blazer. Uh, out of the name of Rick Gross, and he can make these things look like a brand new truck. He's just got a knack. He makes it look like what a new GM truck would have looked like. And we took it and uh, did some suspension and some updates and took the detail a little deeper. He was actually driving a thing and hauling motorcycle parts that he painted. Didn't even have the rear seat in it. Um, And we took it and made more of a a weekender show-ish kind of car out of it. And... uh, that one's still here. It's probably not going anywhere. And then the Bates truck we called Tanya was a one owner truck that I bought from a man's estate who passed, um, was a retired air force communications guy. But that thing, I had every piece of paperwork with it from uh, every gallon of gas had been put in since the day it was new, had a receipt for day two with a camper on it since day two. Oh, wow. Uh, but blew the bed off of that one, did a bunch of work to the frame in the back, and it went down the road at about six in the front, eight in the back, dropped, and rode like a Cadillac. Um, hmm. Just, uh, I guess that's where we started perfecting more of the stances and stuff, what we were doing on that truck. The, the social media stuff was kicking off. People were paying more attention to what we were doing. And that one there was, was probably one of the deeper drops we had done at the time to get one to live right on the street. So. Uh, mm-hmm. actually sold that truck at that show and a buddy of mine that lives in Nashville drove it home to his garage and uh, kept it till the guy at the show could get his funds together and come by on Monday and pick it up. And my right. buddy told me, he said, uh, I thought your truck was going to beat me to death all the way home. It's sitting that low. And he said, it drives better than my stock one does. So uh, wow. that was That's awesome. And I started figuring out, I believe we better not change too much. We're about to get this thing figured out. So Right. Yeah. Find, find something to work, stick with it. Exactly. Generally, and, and whether or not you said you built it or purchased it, uh, walk me through uh, changing a four-wheel drive Blazer to a two-wheel drive. So he ended up, the thing was four-wheel drive, uh, come out of Florida, had some uh, issues in the frame, not very much rust at all. Mm-hmm. They had bought an 81 two-wheel drive 
and the body was gone. And he said, you know, that chassis is going to be something that we're going to need. So he had kept it. Mm -hmm. And they basically just took that body and set it off on a two-wheel drive frame. And mm -hmm. the front clip on that one, if you knew much about square bodies, you look at it and know that's a custom deluxe one headlight front end. They never made a blazer look like that that was two-wheel drive. It's too new. Um, right. Now, how the core support mounts and everything. Well, the, the actual style of the grill, getting down to gear brakes and, and characteristics of that respective year, mm -hmm. uh, everybody sees that front clip, knows you've clipped it or, or did something. Uh, right, it's it's, it's too it's too floor. updated, too new. Exactly, exactly, right. and it's a high hump floor like a four wheel drive. But you know, it's it's been it's been swapped over the right way, and it rides and drives right. And you know, it's just it's a good piece, it's a really good piece. The guy does some fantastic work. He's, mm -hmm. But it was a hard enough piece to find that when we grabbed that one, it was already together. We knew we were going to be building this suburban. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't want to blow one apart and do an entire build with this suburban coming up that we're, we're doing. So it, uh, sure. it came right in at the right time. He had a 69 Camaro yellow houndstooth uh, mm -hmm. car he sold and, uh, he needed something to ride for a while. So it, it fit the bill. Very good. And those, that chassis specific to that suburban, it's not a truck modified chassis. Uh, you talking about on the uh, 62? I said suburban on, on the, on the, uh, the on, on the, um, on the blazer. Right. No, it's it's a true 81 two-wheel drive chassis. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, pretty much just the way GM would have done it, except what we did to get it down, to get it lower. But Very good. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much just a body swap on that thing to have a good mm -hmm. free body and take a four-wheel drive over to a two-wheel drive. Wow. Yeah, not a whole lot of those were made two-wheel drive. No, and I think there's there's more coming out of the woodwork because people are hunting. Used to, people didn't want them. They wanted the four-wheel drive on the truck rallies, you know, and wanted that look. Right. But I've got some friends that's uh, that's got them now and uh, a couple mm -hmm. of guys that I've met over the internet. And, um, they've got them and they love them and can't get enough of them. they got a lot of room. They're comfortable. They're just they're a good piece. Nice. Yeah, they, nice. They look good lowered like that, too. Well, you get a guy every once in a while, so I can't believe he did that to that thing. It was a four-wheel drive. Why do you have that thing in it? Well, you know, it's how we want cool. Thanks for noticing. Because it's cool. <laughs> right. Because it, doesn't, <laughs> because it doesn't look like yours. It doesn't yeah. look like yours yeah. at all. And my Fairly five got... thrust won't fit your four-wheel drive, so now we're good to go. Yep. So. Exactly. And, and besides that, it got his attention, too. So. <laughs> exactly. That is it. So this build is the one we've been talking about. This is for my parents now as well. Um, you know, he getting to wear the Camaro just wasn't fun anymore. We built a big Rowdy 383 to go in it. It was quite a bit of compression, took a lot of tuning. It's four speed, didn't, couldn't get enough converter in it to live right on the street. So we ended up to Muncie. He said, I want something with some room in it, sell my Camaro. So I sold it to a guy who was actually looking for a yellow house tooth car. And we, <laughs> We bought a 61 Falcon wagon and he thought he wanted to build it. And I, you know, we would have probably got a lot of hate mail, but we were fixing the Chevy eyes of Ford Falcon wagon. <laughs> um, but he couldn't get in and out of it either. And he said, you know, you'll never find what I want. And uh, so what is it you want? He said, I want 60s Suburban. And I'm a full-time firefighter. Went to work the next night when duty day was over. We're free to get on the internet or whatever. And I found this thing in uh, Lee Summit, Missouri. Jim Streeby had it. And wow. uh, he had found it, put it on. And uh, I actually called and, and tried to see if we could work something out. And he said, nope, she's running the distance. So three-seater custom cab series uh, was a factory V6 gas engine with a hydromatic four-speed automatic. And the thing's going down to the frame. Um, it's actually, we've got front suspension mocked up and, and worked on some of the rear end stuff yesterday on it. But mm -hmm. um, three fit going to do a 350, 350 turbo, Curry 9-inch in it. Uh, we've got a narrowed rear end. We're going to do a nice deep lift wheel. Uh, Retch out and had Brockmeyer do us this drawing. And, uh, and I told him, I said, you know, I've got an idea how I want the thing to look. And I know people pay you for, for you to do your, your art expertise, your design style, but I kind of do that too, and, and here's what I've got in mind. So we kind of met somewhere in the middle, and then he mm -hmm. made this drawing for us, and he's sure. got it nailed. That's that's pretty much the way that thing's going to look down to the tag and the tag number. That's awesome. So yeah. Looks like a nice truck. 
super, super easy process. And I, I would recommend him to anybody. He, uh, we told him it was going to be a sponsored build. I've had some companies that, uh, you know, had talked to me in the past said, you know, you've been selling our stuff for a while. If you ever do a build, that's not going to be for sale. You're going to have it for a while do a little promoting, you know, we'd like to help you out and get on board with you. So told Eric, I said, uh, you know, would you be able to add some logos as we go along? And he agreed to do that. And, uh, so we started talking to people and said, you know, we've got this going. Uh, you said you wanted to work with us. So we're pulling the trigger on this thing. So let's work. And, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Chris Plump, manager of American Racing, has got to be a friend of mine over 20 years. Uh, I've met him through selling American wheels. He said, yeah, we'll do some wheels on it. We'll, we'll get up with you. And uh, I've got a friend here that runs a company called Black Label Coatings. And you might check him out on social media. But he's doing some fantastic powder coat work, shipping stuff all over the place, and doing a lot of seed wow. stuff. So mm -hmm. he's on board for our powder coating. QA1 just came out with a tubular suspension for these trucks. Now, that Suburban is trailing arms, so it's pretty much like a truck. Um, but they're they're on board for the suspension. We've got I did it steering columns is on board. Um, and here again, we're dealers for all this stuff. Low car performance, Power Master, steel rubber. Uh, reach out to them because there were certain parts for that Suburban they offered that nobody did, um, that theirs were just more accurate. And uh, we talked to them, and the lady called us. We set up with them, and now we're a dealer with them. We're selling their products. So, um, Trick Manufacturing, there's a company now, they're, they're doing bare claw door latch kits that very little modification to your door. A guy can do it with a few hand tools in his driveway and get these doors clicking shut so you don't have to slam them. So we're on board with them for uh, door handles and latch mm -hmm. systems. And, awesome. Uh, AC vents. Um, Willwood brakes, new red power <coughs> windows, um, Vibro Solutions, sound deadening. We're a dealer for them, so they're they're doing their stuff. Vintage Air, Sanderson headers. Uh, we've probably installed probably ten pair of Sandersons this year. We've been using those guys for years, and uh, wow, she jumped on for the headers and stuff on the project. So you know, we we're building relationships and, and treating people like they treat us, and it's just you know that's how you end up with with the good kind of relationships we've got on that truck. Mm -hmm. That is cool, man. It's, it's glad it's, it's a good feeling that, that you guys are working with the parts suppliers on a big project, not only supplying them to your customers, but using them on your own personal vehicle. Uh, that says a whole lot about the products. It does. And you know, I, you know, we've even, we've got a sponsor on there. That's our insurance company that we insure these hot rods with And I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's any social media, you go on any forums, there's always, one thread about who's insuring you and why. And mm -hmm. um, I've probably right. got probably 50, 75 cars that I've told my customers, hey, you know, you need to call our guy. So Ferris Insurance out of North Carolina uh, wow. talked to us about insurance, and they're Grundy worldwide. So sure. um, we, we've even built a relationship with them now, you know, and I've got my customers, you know, they're, they're calling there and getting their insurance. So it's it's awesome. almost like, you know, it, I compare it to uh, like a, a city's partnership or their chamber of commerce. You know, when you mm -hmm. build a good relationship with these companies now, everybody thrives. So. Right, right. Yeah, it's 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 easier. It's a little cheaper and easier for them because they they certainly want to be able to show their product. And rather than spending a whole bunch of money doing a promotion or demos or videos and things they can help and work with you and you'll do a lot of promotions for them and it works out really well. It does. It does. And you know, the shows around here, you see uh, a lot of the same companies that we're dealing with when they display, you know, it's not uncommon. We'll be out in that show and somebody's in the booth using, wanting to talk to them about using their product or they're trying to sell them product. And it's well, Hey, here's this guy, you know, we, we put product in his shop and he installs it. We're putting on his vehicle and you end up leading to a conversation about, you know, why we like it or whatever. So you just, you kind of never know when those opportunities are going to come up to talk to somebody about the product. Right. Right. That's, that's great. That's great. Well, talk us through uh, white lightning here. So white lightning, another 87 R 10. It's owned by Brandon Malloy. Uh, Brandon reached out to the United by trucks guys and uh, talked to Robbie said, I'm, I'm looking to get the truck done. I saw the video about Brian and, and the Goldine truck. And, uh, Robbie kind of sent him his way, I guess, kind of sent him here as a, I guess, an endorsement or kind of vouch for us. 
Mm -hmm. uh, he and I talked on the phone three or four times and made arrangements to get the thing in here. And now we're working on it. It's sitting back here. It's in the early stages. Um, mm -hmm. We just recently got Auto Metal Direct on board on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. We're coming out with a lot of square body product that is just over the top. Um, <coughs> you can't tell that some of it is not GM. It's, wow. it's good. And we actually did some comparison and some fitment stuff on this truck. And we'll be releasing a video. We're going to kind of do a – everybody wants to do front-end Friday, so we're going to do a front-end Friday video about this thing mm -hmm. showing – what the new sheet metal and, and why we want to use auto metal direct. And, uh, sure. but we don't do Detroit steel, the big 20 inch truck rallies on this one. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. No LS motor. We're still doing carbureted 355 roller cam engine. Uh, mm -hmm. Same recipe. We've done the same engine over and over and over with the local friend of ours, David's engine shop builds our engines. He's a one man band down there. He's got a guy helps him about one day a week, but he does a good job. And, he comes, he picks the motor up, and he says, what do you want? And I say, the same as the last time. So, um, tried and true motor that, that does the job and decent power. It's going to start every time. It's not going to run hot. Your AC is going to work right. And, mm -hmm. and that's what he wants. You know, Brandon doesn't want a uh, trailer queen show car. He said, I want to get out and use the thing. So, right. awesome. kind of truck he's getting. The uh, Auto Metal Direct parts that you're using, are they new tooling for that? They are. Um, they're kind of on, in a big push. Matter of fact, last week they were pushing out the new core support and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they show some direct con comparisons to theirs versus the competitor. Right. And the, the difference in it is yeah, anybody can see the difference. I don't think you'd have to be a car guy to realize the difference in what they're right. turning out. And, uh, you know, I've That's got a Go I got a thing that we're doing in the bed for some of these trucks. When we get them super low with these static drops, we got to have just a little bit of relief for the differential in the bed floor. Mm -hmm. And I actually reach out for a bed floor panel from them, and it lays directly on top of the ribs of the factory floor with no deviation. I mean, it's it's wow. factory correct in every way, and that's what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. It's a nice. panel that I made needed to work on a good steel floor GM truck, and that's – that's the kind of stuff they're turning out. I mean, we want good stuff. If I'm going to speak for the customer, their bill and say, hey, you know, you want good stuff, we need to use Automotive Direct. Then, right. You know, that's what we want. We want to speak I've, for We want to know it's good. Right. I, I've certainly been through the mill of using what was available aftermarket parts for a lot of these trucks, uh, you know, and you just hacked them to pieces. To make a to make an aftermarket fender fit, you know, yeah. you, you wonder you wonder why an aftermarket fender is eighty seven dollars for the truck. You certainly you you quickly know why. Exactly. Yeah. And don't lean on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. Super thin and the wrong shape. Yeah. You won't have the problem with the uh, with the auto metal direct stuff. You don't you don't have that. Which I think, you know, I think the Mopar guys has been known about auto metal direct for a while. It's right. been, been using them in that industry. But, yeah, the Chevy truck market is something that they're getting into. They're, they're about to have uh, complete door assemblies for that truck as well. We'll be using some of those to fit them up. We're going to use their rockers and cab mm -hmm. corners well, and stuff like that. So. Well, I can't wait to see that. That's, uh, yeah. that's going to be a big deal. We're going to yeah. do some things a little different. We've got a few little tricks up our sleeve. If you look close at that drawing, you see some things that – you know, it doesn't seem like it makes sense in the drawing, but when you see it in person, it will. Um, just uh, some things that's going to be kind of trick, but it's going to make it where if he wants to throw his wife and kids in it, take a few things with him, he can. It's not going to beat the bed up. And mm -hmm. Just, um, like I said, less is more on some of ours. And right. that's what we're trying to pull off with it. He, it's going to be something similar to the white version of the Goldine truck, but – Okay. We wanted more of a GM look with the big rallies and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like those well, big rallies. Yeah, those look neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're hard to beat. Now, I, you know, I I was wanting to try to swing toward 18s and 20s, but he said, you know, I want to do 20s all the way around and more level mm -hmm. look. And mm -hmm. After I saw the rendering, I agree. It's mm -hmm. That truck's going to look like a really good GM truck, but a more detailed of really good GM clean truck. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, most certainly keep us in the loop on that one. I'd, I'd like to, uh, 
to be involved with what happens with it. That's that seems cool, man. It looks like it's heading a real good direction. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, watch the social media. When we when we put hands on, we usually post something for what we're doing. We try to push something out every day or two or three days at the least. So sure. there'll, be some, there'll be some good stuff. It's, it's in the less than exciting stages right now, but um, we kind of <laughs> kind of hung back till we could get this thing going with Auto Metal Direct, too, because we wanted to use the M1 then on board. So. Gotcha. But there's awesome. there's going to be some good things happening with that truck and the Suburban. Cool. Yeah, I look, I look forward to seeing the uh, progress of both of those things. I can tell you that. Okay. We're so just Jen, go ahead. We're shooting for uh, next show season, mid season on the suburban. Okay. Um, got a few commitments of some of those those sponsors are wanting to put it some places, and uh, we're going to roll that thing out mid season next year. Man, that is that is awesome. Uh, I know you've talked a little bit about uh, your trucks and things you built. Talk about you. I mean, where did you get started? What uh, what was what was your spark? You know, you're a five-year-old kid running around and don't care about anything, and, and, and all of a sudden, I care about trucks today. Well, I'll tell you, uh, when I listened to Kale's episode that y'all dropped last time, uh, when he said he came home from the hospital in a Mopar, <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there going, is this kid kidding to me? Because he sat there and pretty much described the same thing I would have told you. Wow. If, uh, I've never watched the thing. Uh, when I was born, I came home from the hospital, 73 Z28. Uh, oh, nice. had hot rods. Um, you know, it, we had older cars. Yeah, we liked them and they were cool, but that's what he could afford to drive at the time. You know, it was our second right. car and he picked up what he could to drive. So I can remember us having a 65 El Camino. We had a 52 Dodge five window truck. He had a 52 Dodge that had come from Honest Charlie's at one point in his life. Um, wow. We, we had some crazy stuff. And then as I got up, you know, high school years, we started getting into the first gen Camaros. We had a 68 and we had a 69 that was a Z28 clone and actually had three Camaros in three days one time. And then we, we ended up with the yellow houndstooth car and we built that thing together, me and dad. And I knew at that point that I wanted to try to have a shop. That's what I wanted to do. And, uh, I knew that I couldn't do it without some kind of good insurance or some kind of plan. So, I ended up in the fire service. I'm a full-time firefighter, town of Greenville, Tennessee. I'm a lieutenant on engine three. And uh, I work a day and I'm off two. We do 24-48. And I've got about four years to retirement. And I will have made a career. And I'm going to go straight to the shop. That's, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Kale said, you know, he was growing up, he was doing models. And I did models at different times. And even in my adult years, went back to the model hobby. Um, mm -hmm. And it got I worked, out of, I worked know, on model cars did. today. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we started machining our own wheels and our own headlight bezels and, you know, cutting out grills so we could put an etched stainless grill in and stuff, and it, it's like you start telling people, so why do you do these models this way? Well, that's the approach we do with the real cars. Mm -hmm. And then the real stuff started kicking back off. So I've kind of took a step back from the model hobby. But we're still involved with it. I've got a good friend that holds a show for charity once a year, and we sponsor a trophy there. And we're sponsoring a thing this year. We're going to do a Harrison's Rod and Custom Junior pick where we're going to say, hey, you know, whoever wins, we're going to give you a Hobby Town USA card and try to get awesome. you to do it. Make sure and bring your dad with you or whoever, your family or your friend that helps you do it. and Bring a kid to a model show because I'm telling you right now, as crazy as it sounds, a lot of theory and things that I learned and portions that I measure and things of that nature, I figured out setting stance on models. And I, I'm telling you, I sit here and have that argument with anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figured out how to get away with this, how to get away with that. And I'm probably, you know, I don't think I'm alone, but I might be a little OCD about it. But if I go out here to figure out stance nope. on the car, I'm taking measurements. I'm figuring proportions, percentages of this, percentage of that. When I get right. done with the thing, I want it looking like it leans forward. I want it looking like it's moving, sitting still. Right. I need to get you in here from 300 feet away in the parking lot so I can show you the up close stuff that's cool. Right. And a lot of that comes from that model, model hobby. Um, yep. You just, uh, it all ties in. And I tell you, if we don't get these kids doing this stuff and get them out here, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't want to get out and get into trouble. I didn't want to be out getting into anything. I want to be home with dad working on that Camaro. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's what I liked, you know. 
Yeah, that's that's important. And, and, and Sean and I really preach that quite a lot. Uh, wheels, stance, color. Yep. yep. That's what attracts people. You can spend a hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a vehicle, doesn't matter. Somebody walks by your vehicle and they spend 30 seconds looking at your hundred thousand dollar plus car. Is that worth it to you? To me, it is. Um, people that don't get it never will. Yeah. Um, but it, it is a hundred percent in that order. Wheel stance color. Any one of those can wreck a vehicle. Well, and I, I'm a big, I guess, proponent too. The thing has to sound right. You know? Yeah. Yes. That's what frustrates me more. You gotta get it. And I don't care that it's quiet. I don't right. care that it's, that it's smooth. It doesn't have to be the most radical mm -hmm. fairgrounds can in the parking lot. But if that thing sounds like it's got seven exhaust leaks and you drug the bottom off of it, <laughs> I'm done with it. You know, it just, yes, I, right, right. It's, a, it's a whole package. And mm -hmm. we started to get to where that's kind of what we preach here. You know, you want to bring it in and do this, do that. Well, that's great. We can do that for you. But have you mm -hmm. seen this that we do? We usually do this right. when we do that. We usually yep. add mm -hmm. this other part to it. Let me put you a package together. Let's do the whole thing. And we're turning these square bodies out. As a as a whole thing, because it's mm -hmm. just like you said, it's it's a certain package every time. If the tires and wheels not right, the proportion of the front tire and the back tire not right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all that comes into play. All four fender wells are not the same height. You know, it's it, <laughs> everything's got to everything's got to be right, and that's that's where we're at with it. Just like you said. Yep. Yeah. yeah that's I that's super. Go ahead. I, I want to touch on just the bottle thing, just real quick. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of years building cars and building uh, machinery, and I always get new people that will come in underneath me, and one of the first things I will ask them is, did you ever build model cars as a kid or even as an adult? Have you ever built model cars ever? And if they tell me no, not always, but chances are there, there's going to be problems, but if they tell me yes, then it always just seems like the, the, the mechanical – abilities or the dexterity or whatever it is just seems to click better and i don't know it's just just weird that it, it's always been my experience if, if somebody tells me yes they built model cars mm -hmm. then then the mechanical ability seems to follow along with that there is a yeah. lot of in that and i you know i didn't play a lot of sports growing up i i did some things you know sports wise but i wasn't crazy about it i wanted to go to the garage to take some part of work on it. you know mm -hmm. i was on the child i was by myself a lot, and, you know, so dad spent a lot of time more, you know, fussing because the screwdrivers wasn't where he said they should have been, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. his toolbox leaving stuff scattered, but, you know, I'm taking stuff <laughs> apart and doing this and doing that, and, you know. Yeah, you know, that's another thing. I, you know, we were talking about trucks and, and where we come up from and, and where we grew up, what, you know, what led you to here. You know, I had many trucks. I had lowered Chevys. I had S10s back in the day. Now, my stuff didn't always look the style of everybody, even back then. It was more street mm -hmm. rod. But we were at the street rod shows. We were going to Nat South and Knoxville every year. We were going, you know, the NSRA stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. and my stuff didn't look the same then, but, you know, you could look around back then and, and be at Maggie Valley, the mini truck show, or you could be some of the other big, big meets and look around at that time and tell that guy – 20 years from now, he's going to be building 60s cars, or he's going to be building this. He's just, there was a mm -hmm. little something different about some of those people. And I've yes. had this conversation with a few other builders. They're like, you know, we, we kind of knew back then we was going to be doing this one of these days. Right. And I just, um, I don't know. I, I think stereotyping certain cars and certain builds and certain styles that some of these people's got, Everybody's going to have to learn to tolerate what some of the younger people are wanting to do. They all don't want a 32 Ford. They all don't mm -hmm. want a 55 Chevrolet, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And if we can get them doing something, you know, I've had this talk with some people at the NSRA here lately, you know, they're mm -hmm. trying to do some things to, to, to build it up and, and get some people coming out at a younger age. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the styles are changing, the times are changing. We need to, we need to embrace some of what everybody else is doing and, and, Instead of bucking on ideas and things, say, well, you know, my idea wasn't always the most popular thing, but it evolved to something that is. And I think right. there's room for everybody. Right. As uh, and, and we ask all of our guests this, uh, what uh, what are you, or Harrison's Rod Shop, doing specifically, if anything, uh, to gain the new, uh, the new people, the new kids, 
teaching kids generation. about the younger generation, teaching the new kids and younger generation, teaching them about, uh, about vehicles. Well, I, you know, like we touched on with the model thing, you know, I, I try to promote that. I want to see some people getting out and getting into that stuff at a younger age because I do think it, if they enjoy that, it's going to breed into more things as they get older and get them involved in it and stuff. Um, I, I guess I've got more of an interest in that because of where I came from than anything. We do that. And had some talks, you know, in the last couple of years with, uh, with some major – uh, street rod organizations about ways to get younger people involved and things we mm -hmm. can do to get a younger age uh, coming out to the shows and stuff. And you know, I don't, I don't miss a chance to have some a conversation with somebody who may be a little more convinced that everything should be of a certain generation at a show, or everything should be a certain style, a certain show. Mm -hmm. I have a conversation pretty regular with people. You know, well, I, I don't want to, you know, discredit your opinion, but. I think we could be a little more open-minded about it and accept some of these people in. And uh, mm -hmm. have been well impressed with some of the people in the industry that shared the same view and realized, hey, you know, it's, it's not been that long ago that my dad and I were having this conversation about, man, I wish trucks were more popular. Because right. I used to like to buy a late model truck, keep it clean, hit the truck shows, you know. Right, I could right. drive thing to work, I could do what I need to do when I was 20 years old, and I didn't have to have 50000 sitting over here in another vehicle. Right. And the truck didn't have anywhere to go. Well, now they do. And I think it's it coming to the forefront has, has helped a lot of things in the hobby. It's just being able to, to have a place that they're accepted now and people are realizing, you know what, I, these trucks, just like you said, 73 to 87, nobody thought there were anything. Now they're kind of taking those. You, know, you can really have a nice piece here. Right, yeah, yeah right. I Very much so. I think that's going to bring a lot of younger guys in because they can afford to, they can afford to get started, you know, on something mm -hmm. like that. Right. And the uh, and and as usual, what's coming up next? The uh, the OBS trucks, what they consider old body style trucks, um, those things are absolutely coming in crazy. What I consider a used car, those are now classic cars. Yeah, and I still, and they're, they're I still consider them like I still consider them late models. Right, I, makes me feel old, but that's I I remember them coming out new, and I just right. <laughs> I, I drive. He said too that somebody can grab one of those that's a little further along, not have to go as deep and be overwhelmed with the first thing mm -hmm. they ever touch. Mm -hmm. You know, first thing somebody grabs, yeah, there's people to pull it off. They take the first car they ever did down the frame, build a new thing out of it, and they can handle it. And then there's some people that are going to make it halfway through that and be hunting somebody that does what I do to finish it because they just they they're overwhelmed. Well, with this yes. later kind of stuff, you can go ride it. It's dependable. You can do what you need to do a little at a time. Right. And not overwhelmed with having to go so deep in something. If you enjoy it, they go a little deeper the next time. You can flip the thing, go get something else. So right. I think that's and, gonna be good. And, yeah, and I me. see them that they're available and they already have power windows, seats, air conditioning, um, you know, a, an okay stereo or something in it. It isn't uh it isn't something that's going to be considered a vintage vehicle where none of that stuff was available. Um, you know, hardly any of the 73 to 87 Chevy trucks, you kind of got to look hard. A lot of them still have roll up windows and things like that. They, on the OBS trucks, almost all of them are, are, uh, are power equipped with a lot of stuff. And, and I think, I think that invite, that invites people to, to want to build those trucks next. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, it's, it's something they could, they could drive, work on a little bit. Mm -hmm. and continue to drive to work or school, you know, for, for somebody who's younger and mm -hmm. still enjoy the vehicle as they're, as they're building it up. Yep. Yeah, you know, we we talk about sometimes, too, some of my friends that have 40s cars. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're big into the 48 and older stuff, and that's great, mm -hmm. too. We like those. I've done work on those. I've had one of them in here recently working on it. Mm -hmm. You know, the X-Frame Impala stuff. A lot of people are in the X-Frame GM, the Impalas, the Olds, mm -hmm. the Buicks, what have you. Um, we do a lot of that stuff here too. And you know, I, I love a sixties, you, you know, early sixties GM X frame car. Well, they're relatively reasonable, mm -hmm. you know, and they're got to where people are grabbing a four door, they'll grab a four door hard top or one of the pretty four door sedans and they're riding the wheels off of those things. You can drop right. an air system on it, put a set of wheels on it. You got a big old riding car with room to haul all your stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's just, there's just a lot of ways. I think right now there's more ways than ever to have a good time for less money 
that mm -hmm. has probably ever been in the industry and people are accepting the patina and they're accepting that, you know, Hey, this is an original car with a couple of scratches, but it's, it's original, you know? Right. So now it's, it's a good time to be involved with, with what's going on in the hobby right now. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I mean, hot rods, uh, low riders, patina cars, uh, you know, big four doors. You could, you can lower them, put big wheels on them. I mean, everybody likes all that stuff right now. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Well, cool, man. I, uh, you have anything left for, for Brian there? No, I think that pretty much, uh, covers everything we wanted to talk about today. Cool, man. Well, I certainly had a uh, great time. Very informative. Great oh, time absolutely. speaking with you and learning about your shop and what you do, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, I would like to say something though before we get off of here. Um, oh, most certainly. Go ahead. We've, Go got ahead. A, we've got a local show coming up that supports a local. Uh, it's a home for children here in town called the Holston Home for Children. Mm -hmm. And the show had to be postponed um, because of the COVID stuff going on. Okay. And it's going to be August 22nd, Greenville, Tennessee, Sundown on Depot. You can go. We have a, I'm the moderator or whatever for the Instagram for that. That's at Sundown on Depot. Uh, okay. Go have a look. And if you're within driving distance, you want to have a good time, come out. United by Trucks, we're going to be doing a United by Trucks with them that day. Uh, my shop's going to be doing a square body truck pick. They'll be United by Trucks pick. But I can tell you that every dime of that money goes to those kids. And wow. it's they're, they're good kids. They're willing to come out and help us. We did a Christmas parade thing. We need some kids to walk that are eager to help. They're just, they're good kids and uh, it's a good chance to do something good. That's incredible, man. Great, uh, great thing you're doing there. I appreciate it. It's just, uh, it kind of got, uh, got brought up to me to need some help with it. And, uh, you know, something I believe in, in you know, paying back, it comes back to you tenfold. That, that is most certainly true. true. Most certainly true. Well, cool. Well, I am, uh, I'm ready to wrap it up if you are, Sean. Yep. Yep. Uh, Brian, appreciate you talking to us today. Uh, been fun. Awesome. Hey, Brian, what drives you? Traditional hot rod truck style trucks that sit right, sound right, go down the road right so you can enjoy them with your friends and family. That's what drives Harrison's Rod Shop. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, share, and give us your comments. And you can tweet to us on Twitter. I am John Custom Carter Meyer. You can follow me at Custom Carter on Instagram. And I'm Sean, Mr. Sedan Man Cheryl. You can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Sedan Man. What drives you?